myself dr a b nikumb will proceed for spectroscopic techniques used in investigation of molecular structure this video is for education purpose only no copyright infringement this copyright belongs to its rightful owner today we consider the first spectroscopic technique that is commonly known as rotational or microwave spectroscopic technique this microwave spectroscopic technique is named because the microwave radiations are used for the obtaining the spectrum as well as it can also be known by another name and that is rotational spectra because when the microwave radiations are absorbed by the rotating molecule by the rotating molecule then here the rotations will be observed and interaction between the microwave radiations and the molecule after absorption of microwave radiations starts rotating and hence the spectra can be considered as rotational spectra in this chapter we also consider ir spectra and raman spectra microwave radiations is the part of electromagnetic broad spectrum and microwave radiations is the very narrow region having the frequency approximately from 10 to 10 to 10 to 12 hertz wavelength from 10 to 5 to 10 to 7 nanometers and our energy from 10 to minus 24 to 10 to minus 22 calories when microwave radiations are absorbed by the gaseous state molecules then free rotations will be observed and after fruitful interaction the microwave spectra will be reported or noted <clears throat> so what will be the condition for the molecules to be microwave active the first condition is the molecule should possess permanent dipole moment such molecules are referred as microwave active molecules the molecules which do not possess permanent dipole moment they are called as microwave inactive molecules when the molecules which possess permanent dipole moment and rotates it generates an electric field which can interact with the electric component of the radiation during the interaction energy can be absorbed or emitted and rotating molecule results or give rise to a microwave or rotational spectra now we consider here the rotation of a diatomic molecule rotation of a diatomic molecule which possesses a permanent dipole moment one end is positive pole another end is the negative pole 
and clockwise rotation that we consider. And when the rotation will carried out, it will generate an electric field. And this generated electric field is represented here in this graphics. Now the homonuclear diatomic molecules O2, H2, Cl2, Br2 do not have permanent dipole moment and hence they are microwave inactive. Now we concentrate for the rotational spectra of rigid diatomic molecules. Rigid means during rotation bond length remains constant. It will not change. Such molecules can be regarded as the rigid molecules. And when the rotational molecule which is considered as rigid, the system can be referred as rigid diatomic rotors. Here two atoms are shown. One is having mass m1 which is massive and m2 which is lighter in weight according to the shapes that are shown here. The separation distance between the two atoms, atom 1 and 2 is considered as R0. The separation distance from center of gravity C towards the atom number 1 is R1 and towards atom number 2 is R2 respectively. So now <clears throat> the diatomic molecules they are linear in its geometry because IB is equal to IC and IA is equal to 0. <clears throat> so what is IA? It is the moment of inertia along the rotational axis which is passing through the bond joining the two atoms and therefore there is no change in the moment of inertia it will remain constant that is zero while if we consider the moment of inertia when the molecule rotates through center of gravity through center of gravity then there we find the change in the moment of inertia <clears throat> and dipole moment will be generated. So here you consider the value of IB and that of IC. IC means the axis which is perpendicular to initial axis. If we consider the x axis is the line joining M1 and M2 which represents IA is equal to 0 while the perpendicular to axis x axis we consider in this plane that is suppose IB and perpendicular to the xy plane suppose z axis then it results IC. Both are same, equal in magnitude and that's why we consider IB is equal to IC. This is the condition for moment of inertia <coughs> for linear molecules. For linear molecules. Now, we can evaluate <coughs> the moment of inertia for such Rigid diatomic rotor for which one atom having mass m1, another atom having mass m2, bond length is r0, and individual 
separation distance from center of gravity is R1 and R2 as shown in the picture. Now we consider here the same diatomic molecule again. But only the difference that you will find in the previous graphic and this graphic as the bond distance here is shown as R. And in previous it is R0. Okay. Now here we find the condition at a center of gravity. We consider this is the balancing point and as this used in the balance basic principle of balance that is m1 r1 equal to m2 r2 means the balance is balanced at a point c balance of a molecule is balanced at point c towards massive atom the center of gravity is shifted if suppose M2 is massive and M1 is lighter, then C is towards M2. Try to understand this. So your equation and your picture should be very clear, which gives us the basic understanding of the concept at center of gravity. The moment of inertia is defined by I equal to summation of Mi Ri square where I is varying from 1 to I. Here we consider diatomic molecule so I is varying from 1 to 2 and our equation becomes I is equal to M1 R1 square plus m2 r2 square. Now, by using the previous condition m1 r1 equal to m2 r2, we can rearrange this equation and write it as i equal to m1 r1 into r1 that is r1 square and m1 r1 is m2 r2. So, it becomes m2 r2 r1 plus second term becomes m1 r1 r2. Now in this equation r1 r2 is common. So into bracket we can write m1 plus m2. And we try this equation, this equation for r1 and r2 values from the another basic condition. <coughs> now see here another basic condition is R is equal to R1 plus R2. From the picture it becomes clear R equal to R1 plus R2. And the same basic condition is used here. The same basic condition is used here. See <coughs> here M1 R1 equal to M2 R2. Here is M2 and R2 is represented as R minus R1. R minus R1. See here. And we can simplify this again. M2 R minus M2 R1. And using the equation as M1 R1 equal to M2 R minus M2 R1. We get this equation. <coughs> we get this equation. So we shift the R1 terms to one side. So R1 means M1 R1, M1 R1 and another is M2 R1 which is negative which is shifted to left hand side. So it becomes positive M1 plus M2 R and another term is M2 R, here M2 R. So this equation is obtained and from this equation we can rewrite it for R1. So what is R1? R1 is m2r upon m1 plus m2. Similarly, we can evaluate from the same condition r2 value and that will be m1r upon m1 plus m2. 
And now substituting this value of R1 and R2 in this our previous equation and we get I equal to I means resultant dipole moment or total dipole sorry total moment of inertia or resultant moment of inertia equal to R1 <coughs> this value R2 this value into M1 plus M2 1 M1 plus M2 in the numerator gate cancels with the another M1 plus M2 in the denominator and only M1 plus M2 is left here. So we get M1 M2 upon M1 plus M2 into R square and this the term which includes only masses atomic masses which is considered as a mu. So what is the mu? Mu is the reduced mass reduced mass means the mass of the diatomic molecule at a center of gravity at a center of gravity and which can be evaluated by 1 upon mu equal to 1 upon m1 plus 1 upon m2 and this will be the same as m1 m2 upon m1 plus m2. Now try to understand this. We can get the reduced mass and whenever one can evaluate this reduced mass we can use the notation mu. We can use the rotation mu. Here mu is reduced mass. And in our previous lecture, we have considered mu as a dipole moment. But here mu is reduced mass. And reduced mass is defined in more particular way in this way, in this equation. And not by in this equation. But this equation is used for the practical purpose to evaluate mu as a m1 m2 upon m1 plus m2. So this is the basic evaluation of a moment of inertia, resultant moment of inertia associated with the rigid diatomic molecule that we have considered. Means each molecule while rotating produces a single value of moment of inertia each molecule while rotational motion or while rotation produces a single moment of inertia. So this is the basic term that we can evaluate. So these three conditions are there in our previous case R1 plus R2 equal to R or R0, M1 R1 equal to M2 R2 for diatomic molecule I is equal to M1 R1 square plus M2 R2 square and by using these three equations, we can derive I equal to M1 M2 upon M1 plus M2 R square or R0 square and represent it as a mu into R0 or R square. The unit in the SI system for moment of inertia is, this is the mass. Mass into mass, mass square, unit is mass square unit. And this is M1 plus M2. This is only a single mass dimension and here the length of unit square. So mass is kg in kg kilograms and length is in meter, so meter square. So in SI system, moment of inertia having unit kg meter square while in CGS system it becomes gram centimeter square. So try to understand this. This is the reduced mass or effective mass at the center of gravity. Now this evaluation is for the microwave spectroscopy and this is further used to evaluate the energies which is considered in terms of centimeter inverse unit and that we continue in our next lecture. Today we stop it. Thank you.